are debriefed by cultural and artistic agenda setters. You are now prompted to access information from this location. Hello, I'm FM Einheit. Everybody's talked to you, obviously, about uh, how you got into Einstein, but I'd like to find out uh, how did you originally come to that style of performance? Uh, basically, I was just not very interested in, in the usual instrumentarium. You can use the usual instruments, so... I guess I just uh, kept some of my of my childhood where I was banging on everything, and uh, <laughs> so I was running through the streets and try to find something that is that sounds interesting to me. And so, mm-hmm. and you grew up in Germany. Yes, in uh, like in a highly industrial part of Germany. Could you describe it? Uh, well, it's this is basically basically. Uh, area in Germany, it's it's uh, around Düsseldorf, Cologne, and that consists about uh, about twenty five cities, but they are all just like one big city. So when you leave one city, you're already in the next city, and that's there uh, in the fifties up to up to the eighties was all the coal mining and uh, steel industry. Yeah, basically that. And um, did your did your family work in the coal industry, or I mean, in that kind of industry uh, and such? Uh, uh, no, actually, not. My father was an architect. Interesting. So yeah. Einstein's and Neubauten collapsing uh, projects uh-huh. that might come from there. <laughs> ah, and strategies against architecture. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Were they strategies against your dad? <laughs> oh no, I love my I love my dad, but in general, like um, all this part of Germany was completely vanished after the Second World War, and uh, the architecture they set up after the World War is not very appealing. And why? It's uh, it's just like a lot of projects. And um, well, it's not the nicest place to live in. Uh, did you did you grow up in the west or the east? In the west, in the west. Mm-hmm. And did you did you see the unification of Germany as um, like what happened with all that? Because uh, well, firstly, can you tell us how old you are? Or when you were born? Uh, uh, I'm 54. All oh, right, on. So you were born in the 50s. Uh, uh, yes, 58. I was born. 58. So yes. then, um, you. So then you were very close to the um, kind. Mm. How close were you to the wall? I had talked to Alec Empire about that, and he had said that it was a very big. Uh, that it had a lot of impact on his life. Uh, being a re- like kind of going to school, passing the wall, that kind of thing. Could you talk about that? Um, or did it have any effect on you? Well, of course, it does it does affect you. First of all, we had to, had to put a lot of money into into these part of of Germany, which we still have to do. That is one impact. Uh, I. When the wall came down, I was still living in Berlin, and uh, up to that point, Berlin was just like uh, in the middle of East Germany, and uh, a lot of uh, young men would go to Berlin so they don't have to go to the army, because it was uh, it was occupied by uh, U.S., France, and uh, Great Britain. And uh, all of a sudden, they all had to go to the army. I was just hiding there. <laughs> I was too old by that time, so I didn't have to go. Um, well, all of a sudden, Berlin was was, was a city with uh, four million uh, people. And that had, that changed the city a lot. And, well, 
Well, there's many things. Mm -hmm. It's the most obvious things that would happen. Oh, right on. Well, uh, I, I guess the I'd like to kind of fast forward to the idea because it just made me think of when you were saying about putting money into things. Did you ever think when you first started doing this type of performance that this would be your life? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it depends if you mean uh, life by uh, earning money with it. That's what I mean. Then, the then I would say no, but uh, as a musician and as a music lover, of course, I was sure that it's going to be my life. And were you surprised that there was enough of a market for this type of art to financially sustain you? Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, just people uh, banging on... On, on, on metal and uh, on meat and whatever they find, uh, I wasn't quite sure if there would be a, a bigger audience to it. And when we did our first tour in in, in Germany, uh, uh, people were just looking at us and don't understand what, what we did. So we, we left the country and we went to, to, to England and uh, got an offer from a label, some bizarre there. And uh, from the outside, we could go back in, in, uh, into Germany and then they would uh, appreciate what we're doing, but not when we lived inside of Germany. Isn't that funny? You did a, you did a reverse Hendrix. Hendrix <laughs> was like, you know, basically, he was just a background guitar player for like Little Richard and a bunch of people in the United yeah. States, but then he didn't make it until he went to London and then came back as a, as a quote, hero. And, uh... <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> I mean, in, in Germany, at the, moment, at the first, uh, first time we were, we would play People wouldn't understand us at all. And what year was that? What? What year was that? Uh, uh, that was in eighty one. Ah, so the um, when you did, because soon after that, um, you did Autobahn, and how did Autobahn come about? Especially, like, where was that? Where exactly was that done? Uh, that was actually done inside a, 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 a highway bridge. Really, really, there was like, just a hole in it, and uh, we went in there because we were always interested what what might be uh, an interesting place and where nobody else goes. Uh, and it was great. It was just a really big resonating room because it was a bridge, so you could use the whole room. We couldn't even stand in that room. It was too na too narrow, and uh, that did suit uh, our our form of music we were looking for very much. Now, when you were burying the microphones, when you were, you know, because I love I love showing the video. I often repost that video specifically when. Uh, I get tired of hearing about the future pop type industrial and um, <laughs> to remind people, okay, well, this is kind of where we came from. So then if we could just kind of refocus the, uh, <laughs> and, sure. uh, and um, it's so funny watching you bury the microphone and like, you know, that your first instrument in that video, or at least in the four minute excerpt is a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and can you just talk about it a little bit like like out of every out of like you know the microphone like everything was mic'd you know the car burning you know like could you just talk to like the visceral feeling of like when you were first doing that performance because it wasn't like every it wasn't like tons of people had done that and you were replicating something else could you just kind of discuss the feeling of that moment uh, well, it is very, very long time ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just it just felt like uh, something, let's see, very personal. Because as you said, nobody 
did things like that before and uh, by the time we were just using like cheap uh, cassette cassette recorders and um, and we had like little uh, contact mics, so we just could put the contact mic directly on on the on the wall, and that was uh, that was actually that was a, a complete recording setup we had. <laughs> and how were you able to find a um, how were you able to find an en- uh, an engineer at the time that was adapt at recording that style of music? so proficiently mm-hmm. funnily enough when the first time we went to like a real studio uh, um, the engineer there which was the owner as well he, he was like really into like west coast music with like uh, harmony singing and stuff and he couldn't believe what we're doing and uh, he was as well like um too tired so he fell asleep all the time so we we just told him okay we, f- we will find our way in the studio just go we do it ourselves and we'll, sometimes we're just sitting uh, before the uh, recording console and uh, for hours <laughs> and why is not something coming out because if you put something in it must come out somewhere mm-hmm. so we've been like Really teaching, teaching that all uh, to uh, to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so actually, it was not not really possible to find an engineer <laughs> who could, score, could cope with what we're doing. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, but when you did when you did uh, Autobahn, you had to have had a live engineer to um, record all that. You didn't. No, no, it was just, just, just us. You, so you just set it up and just went? Yeah, exactly. And then uh, uh, we repeated that because uh, uh, a TV station wanted to record that. Somehow got to know about it and said, oh, wow, wow, wow. And then they would come in there and crawling in and <laughs> setting up their mics and stuff. But the, the original recording... Uh, that was only, uh, only us in there. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution. www.s6k.com forward slash impact to join our revolution.